So today uh, we'll be <coughs> discussing uh, two topics. One is uh, conditions, which are uh, used quite quite a bit in various uh, function areas in SAP TM. And then we'll talk another talk about another uh, important uh, um, functionality called incompatibilities. So we saw incompatibilities uh, in planning profile uh, on on one end. That is on the uh, you know planning profile uh, how we uh, we understood the you know the building block. One of the building block of planning profile is incompatibility settings. So we uh, touched uh, the topic, but uh, now today we'll kind of look at it from its uh, basic purpose. So that's what we will discuss. So first we will talk about conditions. So let us understand what these conditions are all about. So as you might as you might have uh, come across conditions uh, in our uh, uh, freight orders or freight units. So there are various uh, places where conditions are used. So, but first of all, I mean, what is the purpose of these conditions? And uh, why is it that uh, this condition is uh, being introduced by SAP? Um, and what does it do? This Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. Okay. So conditions is something which, uh, I, I mean, conceptually you can place conditions between configuration and customization. So configuration is something which, uh, uh, you know, which uh, a functional consultant uh, sets them up, sets the configuration, use the best practice which SAP provides. And uh, that's what uh, the configurations are typically all about, right? Configurations are already there in. So we configure uh, the existing programs which are already there. So that's the configuration part. Now, what we used to do is that we used to uh, directly, if at all we need some um, decisions or some um, some certain you know um, uh, you know decision making uh, process uh, in that situation, what we normally used to do earlier, we used to use something called user exits and then baddies, and you know programs uh, are copied and modified and called and all that kind of stuff is being done from a development standpoint. So SAP has taken a mid path wherein we have um, something called a business rules framework, right? So under this uh, business rules uh, framework, BRF plus um, conditions is a very important uh, uh, component in that uh, fundamental component, I would say, uh, wherein uh, certain data is structured in such a manner that the system, while you execute, it will pick up those data points and automatically, you know, does some uh, output generation. By virtue of that, certain automated decision making is enabled. So a little bit of, you know, uh, using some data points um, uh, and uh, certain decisions can be made. So that uh, uh, facility is what SAP has uh, provided. So BRF Plus provides conditions to aid in automatic decision making. So that little bit of uh, uh, without what you call development uh, by using certain definitions, or certain tables, or certain rules, or those kind of stuff the automate, uh, automation of those uh, uh, conditions are being uh, made possible. So then comes your condition. So basically it's a simple input output kind of a tool that determines input value. So we'll give some input value and uh, you know that would be some master data or transaction data, whatever, some data point as an input value. And we will also say that, look, if this is the input value, this will be the output value, simple. So that's the condition which we would provide. And then we'll uh, ask the system to consider this uh, as a, 
uh, if the input value is this, then please consider this as output value as the, you know, as the functionality uh, would be processed. So that's what the condition does. Now, where all does this condition, I mean, where all do you use this condition? Quite extensively, you know, it can be used to determine a typical document type, uh, what sort of document type should be determined or what sort of, what sort of organization unit should be determined for a, you know, for a, you know, some sort of a, uh, shipping point or a source location or whatever. And then may, there could be some, uh, the tables we have seen in the charge management, right? Don't forget to subscribe our channel and click on bell icon to update yourself with latest SAP videos. Determination of rates. That is also a uh, kind of conditions, uh, which we had seen when we created the rate table and determined the rate. Um, that is also kind of a condition uh, framework, you know. Then incompatibility. So we will discuss incompatibilities once we try to understand the conditions part. And then determination of loading, unloading, um, you know, and delivery time. So the utilization of conditions uh, can be at uh, various places. So we'll take one simple example <clears throat> to understand how uh, how we could uh, determine uh, you know uh, an organization unit based on uh, source location or destination location or something like that so we'll try to understand how we can use that so that we we are comfortable in our learning of this particular functionality so in uh, so there are basically two areas one is the front end area and the back end area so there are two uh, different place, uh, things where uh, we should look at to understand conditions. So what you see here is the backend is for ANA area, right? So you have conditions, then you have access definition, condition types, and all data crawler profile, all that stuff is there. So we'll see what is there in the backend, try to understand that. But you have something on the front end also, right? So you have something on the front end, and uh, we will see uh, how conditions are created and uh, you know, how they are uh, used, applied, you know, uh, that we will see both, both sides. Now, let us take a look at, uh, you know, uh, we'll come to condition types. This screen will come a little later, uh, but then let us now look at uh, condition definition. So when you have to create a condition, you need to create a condition definition. Um, so, how do you create a condition definition? So, we'll let us look at the condition definition as such. In fact, I have opened a lot of things here. Mm, just to make ourselves a little comfortable. So, if you want to create a new condition, for example, um, say, for example, if you want to create a new condition, then what do you do? So, you say create condition. So, when you say create condition, uh, I will just uh, uh, get the screen and then we'll go into the current uh, condition which I have created for you, which you can check later on. So create condition. So you can say create condition, uh, click on that. Then it will ask uh, the name and all that stuff. Um, so here you could give a condition name, for example, whatever, uh, I'll just uh, take a, some simple example. Uh, okay, TM22 condition two. Okay, I'll just give this parameter and then uh, TM22 condition two. Uh, okay, I'll just, uh, I created this, but I'll just put this one. And then the condition type, which I want to use. Right, so what I have done, I have just given uh, just the text form, whatever is the condition and description. And now I am choosing a condition type, right? So this is where I will choose for what should I uh, define a particular condition, right? So see, so many conditions are provided already, which are used at different functional areas. So essentially already provides several uh, conditions uh, types which can be used at several 
uh, function uh, location related location incompatibility resource compartment incompatibility resource incompatibility so many are there okay so fubr incompatibility i mean you can also uh, create two fubrs fubr1 fubr2 and say uh, like for example uh, if the